I'm so excited to have you join me today for this really awesome cardigan. This is a top down style and it's really easy to make. Um, today I'll be using the Brava Tweed yarn. This is a worsted weight. There's 218 yards per 100 grams. I'll be using the colorway Wren for my crop version and the Stratus for my longer version. I will be making both of them today on camera in a size small, but I'll be showing modifications so that you can customize your cardigan to how you want it. You will also need a size I, 5.5 millimeter hook, and a size H, 5 millimeter, or even possibly a size G, depending on how tight you like your cuff ribbing. Most of it will be worked in I, the cuff ribbing will be worked in a smaller size. Then we will have some stitch markers on hand because it is really smart to have stitch markers, especially when you're working in rows or rounds, some scissors, and of course a yarn needle. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So for the size small, I'm going to go ahead and make a slip knot and place that onto my hook. And then we will be chaining 68 chains. For different sizes, you will chain a different amount. Now I'm going to be working in the back humps of these chains that makes for a nice edge here. And we're starting in the very first chain from the hook with a stacked single crochet. So I'm going to enter that very first back hump, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through both the loops on the hook, then insert your hook right back into that left bar there that uh, with the stitch we just made, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through both loops. This is a stack single crochet. It is the very first stitch in our row. And I'm going to go ahead and mark that because sometimes it's easy to misinterpret this stitch and work around it, which we don't want to do. Now I am going to use this just in a minute to show you how to get straighter edges with the herringbone double crochet, but we really still want to mark the stitch where we're supposed to. That way we know the first and the last stitches of the rows. Then um, we will be doing eight herringbone double crochet stitches. So here's how we do that. We are simply going to yarn over, insert our hook into the next back loop of the next chain, yarn over and we're going to pull this loop up through the chain stitch and then also through the first loop on the hook then yarn over pull through one yarn over pull through two and that's a herringbone double crochet now i do have a tutorial on my blog that does this a bit slower if you want to catch that i find the most difficult part of the herringbone double crochet is just getting it through that first loop as well as through stitch so pulling through the stitch and that first loop the more you practice it, the easier it will get. And then you will fly with this stitch once you get in the rhythm of it. But we're going to do eight herringbone double crochet stitches, and then we'll do some increasing. Now for the next two stitches, we are going to be placing two herringbone stitches, herringbone double crochet stitches into each of the next two. So I'm just going to be doing some increasing here. So I'm going to do one herringbone double crochet and then the second herringbone double crochet into the same stitch. So we've increased by one right there. And then in the very next stitch, we're going to do that again. So we'll work two herringbone double crochets and we've increased again. So every single time we increase on this pattern, at where our markers will be. I'm gonna pull in a marker. We'll be increasing the stitch on each side of this marker. So we just increased. We have an increase here and an increase here. We're going to place our marker right in between those that set of increases. And these will be very helpful for when we do our next rows. Now for the next steps for this size is we are going to herringbone double crochet into the next 12 stitches. Now, after doing 12 herringbone double crochets, it's time for us to increase again. So we will do two herringbone double crochet stitches into each of the next two. And now we're going to mark between those two sets of increases. We can tell we're doing some turns here, we're making some corners. And now we're going to do herringbone double crochet stitches for the next 18 stitches. Now 
And now after doing 18 stitches, it's time for us to do an increase again. So we'll do two herringbone double crochet stitches into each of the next two stitches. And now we're going to mark between those increases. And now we're going to do herringbone double crochet stitches in the next 12. And now here comes our last set of increases. We are going to do two herringbone double crochet stitches into each of the next two stitches and mark between them. And now we're going to do eight herringbone double crochet stitches, and this will leave one stitch left over because we are simply going to double crochet into that last stitch. And now for the last stitch in the row, we're simply going to double crochet and then we can turn. Now for this size, we are going to be working increasing rows until we have a total of five rows. So I need to do four more rows here where I increase. Now when we're increasing, now that we have these stitch markers in here, it's much, much easier. So I'm going to turn my work, do a stacked single crochet into that very first stitch, and then I'll want to mark that. And now we're going to do herringbone double crochet stitches until we get to the stitch right before this marker. So we put this marker in between the increases. So we want to stop when we get to the stitch right before the marker. And now we're going to do increases just like we did before. We're going to do two herringbone double crochet stitches into each of the next two and mark between them. We'll do two herringbone double crochet into the next one and then do that again, two herringbone double crochet, and then we'll move our stitch marker up and place it between that set of increases. And that is how we continue to increase rounds all the way around. Now this is a raglan style, which means as we can kind of see how this is shaping up as a box here, we're going to be increasing in these four points. This is the front of our cardigan. This will be our arm area and this is the back. We'll be increasing at these four points, which will give us the nice um, neckline and yoke. So for this size, like I said, we're going to be doing the increasing rounds till we have a total of five rounds. Then we're going to alternate between a non-increasing row and an increasing row for 12 times. So we'll need 12 more rows after those eight, and then we'll do one last increasing row for a total of 18 rows for this section. So go ahead and work those up. We're going to run through that really quick again verbally, just so we know where we're at. We're doing increasing rounds for a total of five rounds. Then we're going to alternate between a non-increasing, and we'll just move the stitch markers up around in the same spot between those stitches on the non-increasing rounds. We'll do non-increasing rounds for 12 more rows, and then we'll do one more row of non-increasing, which will bring it to a total of 18 rows for this size, and then come on back. So after doing those increases and we're creating this interesting shape, we're ready to split for the arms and sleeves, but I want to talk about trying this on as you go before we take the next steps. And here's how you can do that. So at this point, you can lay this over your shoulders and kind of see where we're going. The stitch markers on each side, you'll notice like that's where our sleeve opening will be between those stitch markers. So you can always grab a stitch marker from the back and the front, hold them close together. because we'll be doing some chains in between and see about how you feel about where that's hitting this way because you can always add more rows if you want uh to adjust the armhole there but
But at this point, this is a good idea of how it's going to fit. Now it's not blocked, it's a little bit awkward, but this is a great time to try on as you go and make sure that the fit is working for you before you get any farther into it. Now this next row that we're going to do will split for the arms and the sleeves. And this is where it will really start to take shape and make sense. I personally think that the increasing part is one of the harder parts to keep track of. Not so hard if you use your stitch markers, but this next part you're really going to like because it's really where we can just work in rows and watch our favorite TV show or listen to our favorite audiobook. So I'm going to turn here and this is where uh, everything's going to come in really handy with the stitch markers and we're going to do some splitting. So I'll start this row the same way we had before with a stacked single crochet. I almost started with the wrong hook there. So we're going to start this row with a stacked single crochet, and then we're going to mark that first stitch. And now we're going to be working across the next 21 stitches. So we're working in the herringbone double crochet for 21 stitches. So now after doing the first stack single crochet and then herringbone double crochet stitches in 21 stitches, it is time for us to go ahead and split for the arm. So this is our front panel here, and now we're going to make this space the arms. So for us to do this, we're going to be skipping some stitches here. We're not going to be working the arms right now, and we'll be coming back and working them later. So we're going to skip the next 38 stitches and also chain two. So I'll chain two. These are going to be our stitches that will that'll be under the arm. And then I'm going to skip 38. And then I'll start right into that next stitch with a herringbone double crochet. And then I will be working that herringbone double crochet for 44 stitches, which is along the back here. So once I do that, you can kind of see where we're headed. Now we have this opening for the arm simply by skipping those stitches, just chaining two. And now we're going to be working 44 herringbone stitches across the back. So now that we've worked the 44 herringbone double crochet stitches across the back, it's time for us to chain two again and then skip 38, which is the arm stitches. We want to skip those 38 stitches and then we'll be working in this last portion, which is the other front panel, starting with a herringbone double crochet. And we'll be working the same amount of stitches that we did when we started we, we were working 21 stitches and then we'll have one left over and in that last stitch we will either do a double crochet stitch or the straight aid the straight edge trick that i have shown you so it at this point will be split for the arms and the sleeves you can go ahead and remove all the stitch markers we don't need them for this section any longer you can see that we have our arms and our body split. Now for this next section, we are going to simply ignore the sleeves hanging out here. They're going to hang out. We're going to come back and work them later. We're going to be working the body portion of this in rows until it gets to the height that we want. So we'll be working across all stitches and chains for this first row. We're just going to be working in rows across this body portion. And for this size, that will be a total of 92 stitches here. And we're gonna work that back and forth. And what that does is it builds the length of this cardigan for us. Now let's talk about that length because at this point, you can start to determine and think about how long do I want this cardigan? Do I want a crop cardigan? Do I want a cardigan that maybe hits my hips? Do I want something that's even longer and is a duster? Whatever length you wanna make is up to you. The best part about working a top-down raglan style cardigan is you can try it on as you go. So as you work these rows, I highly suggest that you try it on, see what length you like, and, and then account for any ribbing at the bottom. So whatever length you like, remember we are adding some ribbing, so account for that too. The other thing I wanna say about this part where we've gotten in this far in the project is that our gauge really matters. It really matters for garments, not so much for home decor per se, but for garments, we wanna be checking our gauge. I know that maybe you did a gauge swatch or you skipped it or you checked your gauge at this point 
And it's really important to not only just check it once, but to continue to check it. When I first started filming this morning, I noticed my hands were a bit slow. I don't know if the coffee hasn't kicked in or what, but sometimes that muscle memory takes a minute to kick in. And until our hands are really warmed up and going, it's possible we're not on the right gauge. Or I might be more relaxed today than I was yesterday, and my gauge might end up being a bit more loose. So the only way to know is to continually measure as we go every 5, 10, 15 rows. Just take a second and see what your gauge is doing so that you can be conscious about that because gauge will always affect the fit. So go ahead and work up this portion, whether you're going to work it as a cropped or a long cardigan, and then we'll come back after that section and do some ribbing. So after adding seven rows, I like where it's at. I also like to do a thicker band along the bottom. So I tried it on and I'm happy with this for a cropped cardigan. Of course, I would go a bit longer if I weren't making a cropped cardigan. This is where I'm going to stop for my style and taste. For you, it's really customizable here. You can really do what you want to do. It's not going to really change uh, anything in the pattern other than the length. So you're just fine to do whatever amount of rows you want to do. And then when you have the length you want before we start doing the ribbing, we go ahead and we start doing the ribbing. So for this, we are going to work across the bottom of the cardigan for this ribbing. So we're going to start by doing some chains. So for myself, I am chaining 10 and I'm going for the crop version. I might do a longer one uh, or a wider band on the, uh, the longer cardigan I'm going to make. But for this one, I like this for about this for the length of this ribbing. So I have chained 10 and what we will do next is we will single crochet into the second chain from the hook and across. So at the end of this row, we will have a total of nine single crochet stitches. So after single crocheting in nine, I'm going to go ahead and slip the first two stitches from the bottom of the cardigan. So I've slip stitched in the next two stitches along the bottom of this cardigan. And then I'm going to simply turn my work. And now we're going to be working back down this ribbing. So we're going to skip the two slip stitches that we did on the bottom of the cardigan body. And in the back loop only, I'm going to single crochet eight. The reason why I say eight is that very last single crochet stitch we'll have left over. I want to work that into both loops for a straighter edge. So once I get to this ninth stitch in the row, I'll single crochet through both loops of that stitch. So a regular single crochet. And then it's time for us to turn again. Now, one tip you can do, we're going to be doing a lot of turning here for the ribbing, is you can take this and you can stick it in a shallow bowl on your lap. And then it's really easy to just shift that bowl and turn that bowl as you're working the ribbing along this bottom. The other thing you can do, which I tend to do all the time is I will do a less aggressive turn I guess you could say I'll just kind of flip it and sometimes if my yarn ends up being on the wrong side I'll simply flick it around my hook it's whatever's most comfortable for you to get the turning without going crazy so I am not doing any chains on the ends here I don't find that it's really beneficial and it adds a bit more bulk on the ends of the rows so I go right into the very first single crochet through both loops for the first stitch in this row. And then the remaining eight stitches will be worked in the back loops only towards the cardigan body. And the next step we'll do again is to slip stitch two from the bottom of the cardigan. And then it's time for us to turn our work. And then skipping the two slip stitches, we are going to single crochet in the back loops only. And then in the very last stitch, we'll single crochet through both loops. We'll be working these two rows all the way across the bottom of this cardigan. So we're just repeating those two rows that create this ribbing all the way at the bottom of the cardigan. And here's where I'm going to show you my little trick. Instead of continuing to turn one way, I simply turn back. So that way and I flick my yarn around my hook. 
it's the same as it would look as if I were always turning the same way. It just is a way for me not to have to shift as much. So go ahead and repeat those two rows and then all the way across the bottom of this cardigan. And then after that, we'll have a nice ribbing along the bottom here. So if you choose not to do a hood, we're gonna talk about a different option for the neckline. Um, and we're gonna do a ribbing one. So I'm gonna go down to an H hook for this and I'm going to attach the yarn to this corner. And then I'm going to chain eight. And then we're going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook and in the remaining chains across. So we'll be working this ribbing the same way that we did the ribbing along the bottom. We'll be working with an H hook, however, to make it a bit tighter and fit it around the neck. And then we'll work across all these stitches around the top of the neckline. And when we get back to the other corner, we will fasten off. So you'll simply just want to work the same way we did on the on the bottom ribbing of the cardigan in the same type of instructions but we're doing seven stitches for this and repeating those instructions now after finishing the ribbing all the way around the top of that neckline we're going to start slip stitching and we're going to slip stitch with our eye hook so we're going back to our eye hook and we're going to slip stitch down the front of this cardigan opening. This is the option to do without the ribbon, without the, the hooded option. And we're going to be slip stitching three stitches per every two rows down the front of this. You don't want them to pull tight and pucker, um, but you do want to keep them like loose enough so that it's a nice slip stitch edge down the front of this. So now that we've slip stitched all the way down this front side, we're going to be working these stitches and we're going to switch and do the single crochet herringbone stitch. Now this one is completely different from this double crochet herringbone. So we're going to walk through that and we are going to be starting on the wrong side, the way that we're going to be turning and working this. So sometimes if you've never done the stitch, it's a great idea to practice the swatch. I also have a slower tutorial with bigger yarn on the blog and linked in the pattern as well. So we're going to turn our work and I'm going to zoom in here so that you can really see how to work this stitch. Now, whenever we're working the herringbone single crochet stitch, we'll be working basically a reverse single crochet on the wrong side, which is this is the wrong side. And for this first row working it up, we're going to be working in the back in the front loops only. That will leave a nice line for us across the front. It just looks like a nicer trim. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to chain one. But then our next step is going to be to bring the yarn in front of our work. We want the yarn in the front out of the way. Then I'm going to insert the front loop only, but I'm doing so from back to front. So it's a bit opposite here. From back to front, I've inserted that front loop only. Then I'm going to yarn over. And for this stitch, I prefer to yarn under. It helps to grab it, pull it up. I want you to notice I allow my hook to twist and move a lot for the stitch. I find it makes it much easier. Then I'm going to yarn over and pull through two. That is the very first stitch in the row. We can go ahead and mark that stitch just so we know it's the first one. That is a reverse single crochet. Now for the remaining stitches across here, we're going to go right into the herringbone single crochet. How we work this is we're going to look at the wrong side and we see this, this vertical bar here. We're going to insert our hook into the vertical bar. Notice how I'm holding my yarn to the front of my work. Then we are going to insert into the next front loop only. So we'll insert into the next front loop only from back to front. Then we will yarn under, pull up a loop. I like to let that twist and I like to pull this up to a nice height. I don't want that too tight. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. That is a herringbone single crochet stitch on the wrong side of the row. So once again, we will place our hook under that last bar from the previous stitch. Then we're going to insert into the next stitch from back to front through the front loop only. Grab that yarn and pull it up. Yarn over and pull through all three.
this is the trickiest side to this. So I apologize if this is the first time you're doing this stitch to be doing it on the wrong side, but it's good to learn it because if you can do the wrong side, you can definitely do the right side and you'll be good there. It takes a little bit of practice. I do suggest if you're struggling at all, visit that tutorial and just do a practice swatch and then you'll come back and you'll find that it's much easier to do. So we're going to work this single crochet herringbone stitch all the way across here and then we'll come back and do another row on the right side. And I'm going to turn after that row and you can see all the struggle that you may have felt on this row was worth it because this is going to be absolutely gorgeous. So now we're going to do a right side row which is easier than the wrong side row I promise. So we're going to start with a chain one and then we're going to be working through both loops this time so that will also make it easier. So working through as a regular single crochet stitch we're going to single crochet into the first stitch and then go ahead and mark that stitch. Now what we will do here is we're going to insert our hook underneath that left bar then into our next stitch yarn over and pull up a loop yarn over and pull through all three that has to feel easy after that last row so go through that left bar into the next stitch yarn over and pull up a loop and yarn over and pull through all three we will work this all the way down the front of this and then we'll turn again look at that it's going to be a great herringbone single crochet stitch along the front of this and i also find for this version it can be very gender neutral now after working that right side row i'm going to turn and i'm going to work one more wrong side row the same way we did the first row only i'm working through both loops i don't have to worry about that front loop thing but I want to mention, go ahead and try this on. See how much like thickness of the trim you like. You can do as many rows as you like here. You'll just have to match it on the other side to see if it's the style you like. It might depend on who you're making this for, whether you want this thicker or thinner. And I also want to mention, if you do a little bit thinner, it looks really cute adding a zipper in there to bring those together. So now that I've done this first edge and I did a total of three rows, I'm going to go ahead and fasten off my yarn and then we're going to be repeating those steps, but on this other side. So when we start this other side, we will start from this bottom edge, slip stitching across and then working that herringbone single crochet stitch for three rows to match this first side. So now it's time to work on our sleeves, which I've already completed one here so that I can show you. This is the tapered sleeve, so we will be decreasing it as we get down to the wrist, and then we will do a cuff ribbing, and that will be done the same way as we did um, on this bottom in the same style. So let's go ahead and get started on working a sleeve. Now when working a sleeve with this sleeve, we are going to be joining at the end of the round and turning. That way uh, we can work the sleeve, keeping the stitch pattern the same, but not have to do any seaming of the sleeve in the end. So we're going to join and turn at the end of each round. And I'm going to go ahead and underneath the bottom here, we have our stitches. You're going to want to go to the most center stitch underneath the arm and join the yarn. And then we will want to do a stacked single crochet. And then we're going to do the herringbone double crochet stitch for the remaining stitches around. So you'll have 40 stitches total for this size and for each other size just working the stitches on here and the bottom. I would count them out because you'll see here this may look like a stitch but this is actually the side of a stitch and the first stitch is actually over here. Which because of that I want to show you a way to work this so that you don't have too much of a hole. Now you can use your tail end after you create this to close up the holes. There's usually always a hole left and right underneath of the arms. But if you wanted to diminish that, you can go ahead and do a double crochet decrease or even a double crochet three together for this type of stitch. And that way it simply decreases any hole that may have formed there. Or like I said, you can use your tail end to weave in that later and you'll just simply start doing the herringbone, a double crochet stitch in stitch. So I am going to go ahead and work that herringbone double crochet for these 40 total stitches around. 
Now I'm down to working my last stitch, which is way over here underneath the arm. So once again, this is where if I were to simply just work that stitch, there is a hole. That's just a natural thing that happens. Um, so I'm at 39 stitches and it's good to count because sometimes you can mistake these areas as stitches and they're not. So for this next step, I'm once again going to use a double crochet, maybe probably three together. I'm not increasing or decreasing the stitch count here. I'm simply grabbing that, that void space underneath the arm that would become a hole and I'm making it less of a hole. So if this is just one stitch, I'm not decreasing or increasing. I'm just grabbing those, those uh, spaces to make it less. And then that completes my last stitch for this round. And we are going to go ahead and join to the first stitch in the round with a slip stitch and turn. Now for this next round, I'm going to start this by working a stacked single crochet in the first. And I'm going to be marking my first stitch in every round because it makes it so much easier. And then my next stitch is going to be a double crochet two together. So this is a decrease for this round. So this is a decreasing round. So I double crochet two together, and then I'm going to do the herringbone double crochet until I get to the last two stitches in this round. So now that I'm at the last two stitches in this decreasing round, I'm going to go ahead and double crochet those two stitches together. So for each decreasing round, we will start by doing a stack single crochet, doing a double crochet two together, working until the last two stitches and doing a double crochet two together and then joining. A decreasing round will decrease our stitch count by two stitches. So now I've joined and I'm ready to turn my work and I'm going to be working a row of herringbone double crochet. But now I want to talk about the decreasing for this pattern. So I've just worked my first stack single crochet in the next round. I'm going to go ahead and mark it. But the other thing I like to do is I like to take an extra stitch marker. I can move it up as I go, but I go ahead and I mark my decreasing round. This just makes it so I don't have to go back and do as much counting as this gets longer. Now for this non decreasing round, we're simply doing the herringbone double crochet stitch into each stitch around. We won't do a decreasing round until the fourth round after our last decreasing round. So for the size small, we are going to be decreasing every fourth round, which is why I find it helpful to throw a marker on the round you decrease because then it's easy to see and know when you need to do a decrease again. So I'm going to do three rounds without decreasing. And then when I get to my fourth round, I'm going to do a decreasing round again, and I'll continue working in that pattern for a total of six times. So once I have done that, then I simply complete six more rounds that are non decreasing for a total of 30 rounds for this. So I just want to reiterate that again for the size small for this size, we are going to repeat the decrease round every four rounds, six more times, then we will do a non decreasing round for six times beyond that for a total of 30 rounds. Now, once you have all the rows done, it's time to work on our cuff. So what we will do for that is we're going to go down to a size H hook. So we're going down one hook size. It'll help really bring in that cuff and we're going to chain 10. Now, once you have all the rows done, it's time to work on our cuff. So what we will do for that is we're going to go down to a size H hook. So we're going down one hook size. It'll help really bring in that cuff and we're going to chain 10. Now after chaining 10, we will start in the second chain from the hook and we will single crochet across those nine chain stitches because one of the chains was our turning chain for this row. And then we are going to work along this edge of the sleeve. So this is a join as you go ribbing style. That way you don't have to make it separate and attach it later. Now, once you get back to the edge of the sleeve, we're going to go ahead and slip stitch in the next two stitches along the sleeve. So I'm slip stitching the two stitches along the sleeve. Then I'm going to turn my work and we're skipping the two slip stitches we just did along the edge of the sleeve and working in the back loop only, we are going to single crochet across those nine stitches. 
Now, if you like at the very end, the very last stitch on this end, we can make that a little bit straighter of an edge if we single crochet through both loops. It's just an option. It's really up to you. Both styles look great. Um, but if you like to have a bit sharper of an edge, you can go ahead and single crochet through both loops for that last stitch. And then when we turn, you can chain one or not. Really, it doesn't matter whether you chain or not. Um, it looks the same to me. You can go right into that first stitch through both loops, single crochet, and then working in the back loops only for the remaining eight, single crochet in the back loops only. And then when we get back to the edge of this sleeve, we're going to once again slip stitch in the next two stitches and then turn. So as we get to here, we'll slip stitch in the next two stitches, turn again, and working in the back loops only, we'll skip those two slip stitches and single crochet in the back loops across. So this is what we'll do to repeat. We'll just keep working those two rows all the way around the sleeve edge and then come on back and I'll show you how to join your first edge with your last edge. So now that we've worked our ribbing all the way around, it's time to join these edges and to do so, we will be working through stitches on this side and this side at the same time. So I'm going to start by inserting my hook into the back loop only of the first stitch and then grabbing the loop from the beginning row and then slip stitch those together. So the, for the next stitch, I'll insert through the back loop only, grab the loop from the first row and then slip stitch through all the loops on the hook. And we'll simply be doing that, slip stitching those edges together all the way down and then we'll fasten off and weave in our ends and we have a nice ribbing cuff. Now I wanna talk about the hood option. Whether you're making a cropped or longer cardigan, if you would like to add a, a hood to it, we have the option to do so. So as we notice our first uh, row here, we have the right side facing us when the right side of the garment is facing us. So to start the hood so that we can keep it in this stitch repeat, we're actually going to have the wrong side facing and we're going to join our yarn to the first stitch in the row. Now we're simply going to be working across all of these stitches in the herringbone double crochet and then we will work it to the height we want. It is that simple. I have a guide to show you which height I worked it to. But if you want your hood to be a bit more drapey, if you really want to, to have extra fabric to it, you can keep making it um, higher than I did. Or if you want it shorter, you can. Um, so work it. And the nice thing is we can try this on as we go. So keep working in rows across here. You're just making a really long flap. And then I'll come back and show you how to join that flap to make it into a hood. Now I have done just, you're working in those simple rows for 27 total rows. At this point, you can try this on, maybe pin the top of this to see how the hood looks on you. We will be working um, a fun border all the way along the front. The hood will be seamed like this. And so you wanna just kind of hold it up and see like, do you like the height of the hood? I know everyone might like different heights, like some like it a bit tighter, some like a lot more, um, flop, I guess you could say in the hood, a lot of extra fabric. So make sure that this is the height that you like for um, your style. So the next thing we'll need to do after doing the hood rows is we will need to join the hood together. So as of right now, I have this weird looking top on top of my sweaters. Here's my arm over here. And now I'm simply going to fold the hood in half and have the right side facing out. Then I'm going to take my yarn, and even if you added more rows, this will still work out as instructed. And we are going to slip stitch this together in half. So I'm simply going to insert my hook into the first side, and the side closest to me, I like to do a front loop only. It just adds less bulk to these slip stitches. And then I'm going to slip stitch through the back loop only of the side that's farthest away from me, and then slip stitch those together. So once again, I'm going to insert through the front loop only of the side closest to me, the back loop only of the side farthest away, and slip stitch together. And notice that will bring these hood, this hood together quite nicely. So I'm just gonna work that across for all the remaining stitches. 
After slip stitching those together, you can go ahead and fasten off or even try it on one more time to make sure that you like the way it is because it's very easy to undo the slip stitches, add or decrease the amount of rows you've done and do it again. I really like a little bit of a floppy hood. I think this is going to look great, especially once we get the front trim on here. Now for the hooded longer cardigan or hooded cropped cardigan, we will be working the herringbone trimming, single crochet trimming all the way across the front. So what we will do is we will join at our bottom left corner here, and we are going to slip stitch with the right side facing all the way around the front. And then we're going to follow the same instructions as we did for the crop version herringbone tr front trim, but we, we will be working in rows all the way around the top of the hood and all the way back down to the other corner. So what we will do is we'll do one slip stitch row, we're, and remember to place three stitches per two rows. Then we're going to turn and we'll do a row of the herringbone single crochet, and that will be the wrong side row coming back. Then we'll turn and we'll do one more right side of the herringbone single crochet, and that will be on the right side. And after doing those two rows of the herringbone single crochet, come on back, and I wanna show you that if you wanted to place ribbon in this, we're gonna make space for that. So now I've worked two rows of the single crochet herringbone stitch across the front of this, working all the way up and around the hood and down the other side. It does take a little bit of time because it's such a long length to work all this front at once, but bear with me, it's so worth it. So as I turn my work, I'm back on a wrong side row. Now this is an option for ribbon. You don't have to do ribbon. You can continue to do rows of the herringbone single crochet for as many rows as you like. But if you want to place some ribbon, this is where we're going to do so. I bought two different widths of ribbon. One is a 5 8 inch, and I believe the other one is almost probably more like a 3 4 inch. They're slightly different, but the, the width does matter. So if you bought a 5 8 inch, go ahead and do double crochet stitches on this row instead of the treble. But I'm going to be working treble with a little bit of the thicker ribbon here. So I'm going to start this row with a stacked single crochet, but if you want to, you can use chain stitches to make it a bit higher. If you want, if you want to do that, the other thing you can do is you can follow that stack single crochet one more time. If you want it super tall to match those treble crochets. I'm going to do a treble crochet in the next stitch. And then we are going to chain one, skip one, treble crochet. And we're going to be repeating that until we get to the last two stitches where we will do two treble crochet stitches to match it on this first side. I like adding a little bit more at the bottom here so we have a place to fold over and stitch our ribbon to underneath. So chain one, skip one, treble crochet, and work that all the way across. And then in the last two, do two, do a treble crochet stitch into each of the last two. So after working all the way across, you will do the last two stitches as treble crochets, and it creates this nice border. You can try out if you want. I know it's like just so tempting to grab the ribbon and put it in because it's so fun to see. You can do that at this point, or you can finish off and put the ribbon in later. When I start the ribbon, I start um, coming up the first hole, down the second hole, and I just keep on going. And it will equal out on the other side where you can stitch the ribbon on the back of these two trebles to hold it in place. Now for the next two rows of the frisk front edge, we are going to be repeating the herringbone single crochet. So we're going to turn and we'll work a row of herringbone single crochet. We'll turn and do that again. And after that, you can fasten off and this front trim is finished. So to start our pockets, we're going to start with a magic ring, which I have a slower tutorial for that on my blog and linked in the pattern. We're going to start with a stacked single crochet as our first stitch, and then we're going to do three herringbone stitches inside this magic circle. So we have a total of four stitches inside our magic circle. Now, even though we're doing this inside of a magic circle, we can go ahead and close this tight because 
We're still working in rows. This is just the beginning point of this. So now we're going to turn and do row two. We are going to start by doing a stacked single crochet and a herringbone double crochet stitch into that first stitch. So we're doing an increase there. And then we're going to do a herringbone double crochet into the next stitch. And then for the last two stitches in the row, we're going to be doing two herringbone double crochet stitches into each of those stitches. So at the end of row two, we will have a total of seven stitches. Now we're going to turn and for row three, we're just going to be increasing on the sides from here on out for a total of eight rows. Or you can also do 10 if you want your pockets to be a bit bigger. But I'm going to start with a stacked single crochet and then in the same stitch do a herringbone double crochet. And then I'm going to do herringbone double crochets until I get to that last stitch in the row. And now for the last stitch of the row, we're going to be doing two herringbone double crochet stitches. So this will increase each row count by two, and we're going to keep doing that until we have a total of eight rows. Like I said, though, if you want your pocket a bit bigger, you can do 10. Now for the adult size, we will be working the herringbone double crochet stitch, increasing in the first and the last for a total of 10 rows. For the child size, we're only doing eight. Now the next steps are to do some rows of herringbone single crochet. We are going to be starting in this very first stitch by doing a regular single crochet stitch and then working the next one, the herringbone single crochet, into the same stitch so that we've increased by one. Then we're going to continue to work across this row loosely because this stitch doesn't have as much stretch, stretch horizontally as the herringbone double crochet does. So don't add a lot of tension to this portion of the herringbone single crochet. And we're going to work across to the last stitch and then work two herringbone single crochet stitches into the last. This is the right side row. So this is the easier row I feel like to work. Um, the next row will be worked in the wrong side row, but we will still be increasing on each side of this pocket. So I've done two single crochet herringbone stitches into that last stitch. We're getting two into that last. And then we're going to go ahead and turn. And this is where we will be working the herringbone single crochet in reverse so we'll bring our yarn to the front we're going to be working these in reverse sometimes i do find it beneficial to chain one here not counting that as a stitch but just to get started we're going to be working the herringbone single crochet in reverse by and also increasing so we're going to work another one into the first stitch so we'll have two stitches into that first stitch then we're going to continue to work that reverse version of this herringbone single crochet all the way across until the last stitch and we'll do two into the last stitch as well. Now after working two rows of the herringbone single crochet we have a choice for this next row. We can either do this row like this version where we're going to be adding the ribbon into these um, treble crochet stitches or if you want something a bit more neutral, we can work it like this to where we're simply just doing another row of the herringbone single crochet and we're just having a herringbone single crochet on top. So for the version with the ribbon, I could go ahead and chain three, or if you want to, we're gonna do that stack single crochet, but we're gonna expand upon that and make it taller. So I've done the stack single crochet and I could go right back into that horizontal loop on the left there or vertical loop on the left there and do it one more time to make it taller. And now we are going to do a treble crochet stitch right into that first stitch as well. So we have increased. 
Then we will chain one, skip one, and treble crochet. We're going to continue to chain one, skip one, and treble crochet all the way across. And then come on back when we get to the last two stitches in this row. Even though I've chained one and skipped one, I have two stitches left in this row, and we're going to go ahead and work both of those as those treble crochet stitches and that's the row for the pockets but like i said if you don't want that um ribbon there or you don't like this look you can go ahead and simply do the herringbone single crochet just keep doing that instead of this row and now i'm going to go ahead and turn and we're going to keep increasing here we are working a wrong side row now and we are doing again the herringbone single crochet for two more rows so I'll be working those just as we did before, but increasing in the first and the last stitch and work those last two rows as the herringbone single crochet stitch. Now that we've completed those rows, we can go ahead and, and uh, work these edges. Um, these edges will just make it look a little bit cleaner when we go to stitch this onto our cardigan. So we can chain one, and slip stitch down the side here, chain one and work the center stitch twice, and then slip stitch up the other side. You'll be slip stitching one stitch per single crochet herringbone row, but you'll be slip stitching um, three stitches per treble row and two stitches per double crochet, um, herringbone double crochet rows. Now after slip stitching around, we can fasten off leaving a really long tail because we're going to be stitching down this side and up the other side to join this to our cardigan. And then the other thing I would prefer for you to do is to block this. It's so much easier when you're talking about stitching things together and joining pieces and crochet if you block the piece first. So now the next step for your pocket is to simply Grab your tapestry needle and stitch down these two sides, adding it to the front corner of your cardigan. And then if you are adding ribbon, you can add in that trim and then simply stitch it in place on the back so that it stays there and it completes your cardigan. And the best thing about this cardigan pattern is the options to convert whatever style you like. So whether you do a plain front, you could do this one as a long duster. This is the crop version. You can do ribbon in front of this. You can do pockets or no pockets. You can do a hood or no hood. There's endless combinations. It's almost like a pick your own adventure cardigan. So I really hope that you enjoy the options available to you and create a custom cardigan that you love to wear all season. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and come back for more fun projects soon.